Welcome to the Aging and Disability Resource Connection Dementia Care Training. Aging Services and Supports for People Living with Dementia, Tier 1. This is Module 1, Understanding Person-Centered Care. This training consists of two tiers. The first tier is designed for all ADRC staff and partners and focuses on the information and skills needed to provide initial support and referral services to those with dementia and their care partners. The second tier is designed for options counselors and other staff and partners who provide more detailed service planning and support. Although this training is specifically focused on assisting those living with dementia, some of the information presented in both tiers may be helpful in your work supporting people with mental illness or physical disabilities and their families as well. After all, every consumer deserves person-centered services and supports. This training is the first module within Tier 1, and in it we will explore the meaning of person-centered care. At some point during the training, maybe even now, you may find yourself wondering why we've chosen to focus on person-centered care and behavioral expressions before we even define dementia and the disease processes associated with dementia. That's a good question. As we design this training, we put a lot of thought into what information would give you the best tools to provide support and compassion to those living with dementia and their care partners. While it is important to understand the more clinical aspects of dementia, what is even more important is that you understand that people with dementia are still individuals with a full range of feelings and emotions. Each person with dementia is a human being who needs and deserves respect, dignity, choice, and the opportunity to contribute to the world in some way. Too often, caregivers and others, even those with the best intentions, pay so much attention to trying to treat dementia and its symptoms they forget to treat the person living with dementia. By focusing on the person as an individual, rather than just another dementia patient, you will also get to know that person's strengths and the strengths that exist in his or her natural support system. As a result, you will be able to determine his or her needs and preferences, and therefore you will be better able to offer the best supports and resources. Now that you understand the philosophy behind these training modules and why they're offered in a specific order, we ask that you please do your best to view them in order. In other words, please view the first four modules of Tier 1 in order 1 through 4. Each module will take you about 45 minutes to complete, give or take. If you continue on to Tier 2, please also view those modules in order as each module builds on information from the previous module. At the end of each module, we ask that you complete a brief feedback survey, which will let us know what areas we may need to focus on more, how helpful you found the training for your job, and following modules one through four, which make up tier one, and modules five through eight, which make up tier two, you will also be asked to take a brief knowledge assessment so we know what you learned from the training. Remember, you may pause this webinar at any time if you would like to take notes, or if you're viewing the webinar with others, you may choose to pause and discuss some aspect of the training. We encourage you to take your time and do whatever you need to make this training as helpful as possible. Thank you in advance for your attention and thoughtfulness. Now let's get started. Those with dementia are still people, and they still have stories, and they still have character, and they're all individuals, and they're all unique, and they just need to be interacted with on a human level. Volunteering makes me aware that I can still help others despite what I have. It keeps Alzheimer's from taking over our lives. Listen with the ears of your heart. If we sugarcoat, or worse yet, turn a blind eye to an issue like Alzheimer's because it makes us uncomfortable, we will never understand its complexities. They don't need to tell me I'm dying with Alzheimer's disease. I know that. What they need to do, what you need to do, 
is help me figure out how to live with it. In your work or partnership with the ADRC, you will come into contact with many people living with Alzheimer's or dementia, as well as their caregivers and other loved ones. The information, assistance, and support you provide them can make a huge difference in their lives. In many cases, you may be the first or the only person they have spoken to about challenges related to the disease. As mentioned earlier, this training is designed to help you learn more about Alzheimer's and dementia, but more importantly, this training is designed to help you support the people who are affected by Alzheimer's and dementia, to recognize the challenges they're facing, to provide compassion, patience, and a listening ear, and to connect people to available resources and supports that are there to help them through the challenges. In this first module, you'll review what person-centered care is and how person-centered practices relate to your work with individuals with dementia and their families. You'll also learn how people with dementia are affected by stigmatization and conversely, how they can benefit from social interaction and involvement in the community, especially in the early part of the disease process. What are some of the images that come into your mind when you hear the words dementia or Alzheimer's disease? Chances are that the images you have are not very positive. It's true. Dementia and Alzheimer's disease are incredibly difficult for those with the disease, as well as their families and friends. But what if we could change these images? What if we could replace some of the fear with hope, some of the sadness with laughter? What if people with dementia were given a chance to participate in their communities instead of feeling isolated? What if we could help people with dementia to feel content and secure instead of anxious and fearful? The good news is we can. We can do all of these things. Through your work or partnership with the ADRC, you can help to ease some of the burden for those with dementia, as well as the families and friends who contact you seeking information, assistance and referrals, and options counseling. You have an incredibly important role and your influence can have a huge impact on the lives of those living with dementia. This training is designed to give you the tools and knowledge to help you do just that. While there's a lot of information to learn about dementia and Alzheimer's, this training is focused primarily on how dementia affects people's everyday lives, their emotions, their relationships, and their ability to communicate and stay meaningfully connected within their communities. This training takes what is called a person-centered perspective. It is focused on understanding each person's unique needs, preferences, and experience or sense of the world, and how these all affect a person's quality of life. The first step in really understanding person-centered care involves understanding the concept of personhood and what it means within the context of communicating with and caring for people who have dementia and Alzheimer's disease. To begin, let's do a short exercise. I'd like you to think for a moment about what makes you different from other people. What makes you unique? Your individuality and uniqueness probably come from a variety of places. For example, how you were raised, your culture and ethnicity, the challenges and accomplishments you've experienced during your life, the kind of work you do or you have done in the past, your hobbies and interests, your personality and sense of humor, the important relationships in your life, and your spiritual or religious beliefs. That's a long list. And while there are so many more things that could be added to that list, we'll stop there. What's important to understand is that you are who you are, and who you are is complex and multifaceted. You may have seen this graphic before. It's called the diversity wheel, and it shows just some of the ways in which people differ from one another. It can be an excellent tool in reminding us just how diverse each individual person is. 
Dr. Tom Kitwood was a pioneer in the care of people with memory loss, and he was one of the first to claim that personhood was sacred and unique, and that every person, regardless of impairment, should be treated with deep respect. Until Kitwood's work, people with memory loss were often seen as diseased patients rather than as people who just happened to have a disease that affected their memory. As a result, care of people with memory loss was usually focused primarily on medical needs. This type of care is now often referred to as the medical model or medical approach to care. In the medical model, people are viewed and treated only in terms of their disease or condition, and little attention is paid to a person's social, emotional, or spiritual needs. Kitwood, however, described a more social, holistic model of care in which each person is recognized as an individual with his or her own thoughts, feelings, experiences, and hopes. He also focused on the relational aspect of personhood. In other words, who you are as a person and how you feel about yourself is related to the way other people see you and treat you. Further, he emphasized that each person, regardless of memory loss, has important psychological needs that must be fulfilled. We'll look at each of those needs in detail in just a moment. First, though, <clears throat> imagine for a moment that you're an older person diagnosed with dementia. You have a lifetime of experiences, achievements, and knowledge, but because of your diagnosis, people you know treat you as though you're always confused. When you have a thought or an opinion, you try to explain yourself, but you have trouble finding the right words. Rather than trying to understand what you're trying to communicate, however, people stop listening to you and speak about you as though you weren't there. When you become upset that no one's listening, they say you're agitated and having problem behaviors, and they give you medication that makes you drowsy or makes the world seem foggy. Now imagine a different experience. You're still an older person diagnosed with dementia, but people continue to treat you with respect. They know about your past experiences and what things are important to you. They recognize that you are still capable of communicating in a meaningful way. When you have trouble finding words, they listen and ask questions until they understand what you're trying to say. If you become upset, they take the time to find out why and work with you to solve the problem. They recognize that you are still a whole and complete person, not just a patient with dementia. In the first example, your personhood was ignored because those around you interpreted your actions based on your disease. As a result, you became more frustrated and the situation worsened. In the second example, however, people around you honored your personhood and treated you with respect. As a result, you and those around you were better able to communicate and problem solve with less frustration. The second example was an example of person-centered care. According to Kitwood, person-centered care must address each person's need for comfort, closeness, calmness, the feeling of security, or having someone to soothe pain and sorrow. Attachment, close relationships and bonds with others. Inclusion, being part of a larger group and having a special place within a group. Occupation, being involved in life in a way that is personally meaningful and provides deep satisfaction. And identity, knowing who you are and having meaningful roles in life. Next, we're going to show you two videos about people living with dementia. If you've been impacted by dementia in your own life, these videos may cause you to have an emotional reaction. Remember that whatever reaction you have is okay, and that you may pause the webinar at any point if you need some time to process your emotions or to discuss them with others.